everyone, I'm Nettie K. Welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to be doing a vibrant autumn landscape featuring the tamarack tree of Idaho. If you remember in our last lesson, I talked about that tamarack tree that turns a bright gold in the fall and drops its needles. Yeah, it does, just like a maple tree. It scares the tourists half to death because they think the whole forest is dying. But it's not. It's just a tamarack tree dropping its needles. And then in the fall, it drops its needles. In the winter, it's kind of bare naked. And then in the spring, it turns a beautiful lime green again. It's a wonderful thing. So uh, we're going to add a few of those. Now what I did was I started with a 12 by 16 canvas. Uh, and I put a little bit of purple and teal together in order to get this wonderful kind of muted uh, background and I started with the purple and teal up here and added more purple as we came forward and then I stroked it down into the water area down here so I developed a little line right here just for the sake of time because this is really about getting that color on and not you know fiddling around with the background now as things go back into space don't forget they get bluer or more purple as they're farther away from you on your uh, you know in your visual cueing so uh, the top of the sky is darker, the middle of the sky is lighter, and we'll get into that in many, many different lessons, I'm sure. But now let's get to our trees. Yeah. So now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few little indications of where we're going to put our trees. So I'm going to dip my brush into my orange right here, and I have a little purple down here. I'm not mixing them together. If I mix them together, they look really kind of weird. So. Uh, we're going to keep that uh, nice and fresh and I'm going to come over here and we're going to start with um, a, a smaller tree or a shorter tree right here. I'm going to turn my brush. This is a felbert brush and I'm going to turn it slightly sideways and it's just got a nice kind of a, an orangey glow to it. I'm flipping it over and I'm going to bring it down to right about here, okay? Just slightly above the water line, not too far, because we're going to put some stuff over the top of it. Then I'm going to do it again. I'll put some purple and orange. And the next tree, which is going to be our featured tree, is going to be up nice and high, close to the top of the thing. And we're going to put that going down. Might need to add a little more paint to it. And again, you guys were working in acrylic on this one, but you could probably do this one easily in, uh, in oil paint as long as you keep your colors nice and clean and make that a little bit stronger. There we go. Now at the same time, I'm going to think about what's happening down in the water. So I'm going to come down here and we're going to take that one down. I think we'll just drop it right off the bottom like that and a little orange, a little purple and we just take that back down to the bottom and we just kind of let it go a little bit. You could do something like this. You could kind of wiggle it a little bit too. Kind of wiggle it. There. Now that looks like water doesn't it already now let's make one more uh, i want to have two on this side and one on this side just for fun and this one will make it just slightly shorter than this one right here and we'll put it kind of right in the middle and push that down and make it come down nice and fat I'm giving a little bit of an orangish trunk on that one and we'll pull that one down in the water too like this now that looks really really neat doesn't it yeah Good start. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one and a half inch uh, hardware brush. It's a bristle. And I'm going to take a little bit of that orange and uh, again, a little bit of the purple, kind of the same combination, maybe a little bit more purple. I'm not sure. Well, we'll see. A little orange on one side, a little purple on the other. And I'm going to begin filling in uh, just a little space right here. I'm thinking about these tamarack trees as having their arms upward. And now I'm going to um, place some color on here as we go up the tree like this. What I'm doing right at this stage is I'm creating kind of a, a relatively dark value as we go up this tree so that when we add a little bit of light, actually I'm, I'm going to do a contrasting tree right in front of it. So we're going up like this with just this kind of dark purple with just a hint of orange. I don't know if you can see that. Let's put a little bit more orange on there so that you can see that just a little bit better. And you know, some of these trees can be actually some of the, not the tamaracks, but the trees behind them or around them could be even in the green tones. But I like to uh, stay within kind of the more impressionistic colorings, <laughs> colorations of the orange and purple to start with. And this is going to dry darker than uh, what I put on. So it's going to be even darker than this, than what I add to it. 
Now as I come down here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add this color to the bottom of the water um, in kind of a swirling little application of the same colors. And I'm just going to swirl it like this, just kind of a little shimmy of that, that color into the water. Now this is a little bit easier to do with oil, I got to admit. But uh, we're working in acrylic today just to try to keep it bright. And uh, I'll just put a little bit of that, a little more emphasis on the orange into the water. And I'm going to take it all the way down to the bottom like this. A little more, a little more orange. Yeah, I like that. And, and I'm, I'm doing it in a vertical kind of motion, but I'm shimming it back and forth. And then when we, we get all of our reflections kind of laid in in a vertical way, I'll go ahead and I'll put in a little bit of a, a few horizontal teal marks that are going to tie it all together and make it look just really sparkly and spectacular. Yeah. Now while I have this color on my brush, these two colors, this orange and purple, I'd also like to do one over here. And because this is kind of in a dark, uh, a little bit darker, my feature tree is going to be bright, bright golden yellow. And so we'll, we'll kind of put the, the rest of the trees in this more orange, kind of a muted orange with a little bit of purple on it. And we'll just kind of uh, put this all the way up. I want you to be careful. Be careful how you put, put it on. Don't just do like some of my kids that get all excited about the motion of painting and just start stabbing away randomly on the canvas. That's not what it's about. It really is more about uh, carefully kind of laying out where your branches are going to go. And you just put that on. Make sure you don't have too much paint on. And also don't make sure you have too little paint. So it's, a, a, it's kind of a delicate balance, actually. So we're going to go right up. I'm going to move up just a little bit faster. And I'm, I'm flipping my brush. I'm doing this, and then I'm going this way and this way, back and forth, little by little. And we're creating that initial dark, uh, dark, dark, dark thing that we're going to put the lights onto. And so you need the contrast, everybody. It's important to have a dark in order to get to the light. We're going to make that tree just a little bit taller. And there we go. OK. So that's a little bit about how I'm going to do that, those two trees. Now I'm going to move up to a raw sienna color, which is what we call Dijon when I was out at the Tamarack Resort the other day. And we're going to begin putting in, um, actually, yeah, we're going to begin putting in a little bit of that lighter color right here. And uh, we'll make this tree just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to oh, almost overlap that tree right there. We'll go faster this time because you already kind of know what I'm doing. I'm creating these branches going up the tree one this way, one in the middle, and then one outward. And you can see how that brightness is now overlapping the darker tree right there. And it's coming out forward just a little bit at a time. There we go, like this. And bring it out. And, and when we add the, the extra layers on top, they're going to be even more vibrant when we get the lighter yellows and, and uh, It'll just have a wonderful, wonderful contrast. There we go. Being very careful as I lay these out. Don't forget to get all the way up to the top or you'll have a big stick hanging out at the top. Flipping that over, flipping that over, and so you can see how that, and then I'll fill this in just a little bit more with this color because I don't want too much air showing through. And I'm going to come back in and do the same thing down in the water. I forgot to do a reflection down here, so we'll have to go back and do that. So I'm going to come down and do just a little bit of a swirl and then over this little part right here in a little bit of a vertical thing. But I'm, I'm kind of swirling it around just a little bit like this. And see how this branch overlaps that? So it kind of needs to overlap it in the water as well. So we'll kind of drag a little bit right directly under it. I'm going to try to drag a little bit of the reflection down into the water this way. I will add some teal color to it as we go, and it'll just make it really wonderful. Just some darker reflections going down into the water like that. 
and a little bit more. There, okay, that's nice. Make sure that none of these are getting too weird. Uh, I think I better take these out just a little bit more on that side. That's interesting, very, very interesting. So we're getting some nice dimension, aren't we? Yeah, we are. It's really great. Okay, well, I have a confession to make. I just walked off for a little while, went out to lunch with my husband, and now this is all perfectly dry, which means anything that I put onto the canvas at this point is going to pop forward. On my brush, I mixed or I stirred together just a little bit some cadmium yellow along with a little bit of teal and that made a wonderful kind of a lime green and then I added to kind of tone it down I put some of our raw sienna into it so got just a little tiny bit on my brush and I want to begin to have the effect of kind of sunlight coming down we're going to hit this tree really really bright so I want to see what happens if I just add a little bit of a kind of a bright green color in a little bit of a kind of a bush-like foliage that pops in behind this tree a little bit. You can see that. And so we're going to go in layers and we're going to pop that underneath that tree just a little bit. And it's just a wonderful extra little bit and I'll put a little bit of that down into the water. I don't know if it would actually reflect into the water but I'm going to put it down there anyway. Now because I have this kind of green color and I might have it just coming through this tree just a little bit so that it's a little bit behind. Uh, and maybe, oh, maybe a little bit over here. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's do that. I'm going to put just a tiny bit more of the teal in with that green just a bit so that it, it, uh, it turns it into more of a turquoise color. Ooh, I love that. A little bit of a turquoise color coming in behind. Now generally you would do this what's behind first and then work your way forward and I'm sneaking this in a little bit like putting your undergarments on you know through your sleeve but uh, it's working it's working there we go uh, oh I like that turquoise so much that I'm going to actually add it to this part really gives it a wonderful impressionistic style uh, appearance and so we'll put a little bit of that teal down into the shadow or into the reflection down here and I might just kind of scoot it across a little bit as though it were water and so here I am kind of weaving in some of those horizontal uh, effects of the the teal and the green into the water and it's working out great all right now since I've got kind of a greenish color here what's the opposite to green on the color wheel well that's red think about Christmas red and green and so I'm going to wipe this brush off and I'm going to come in with a little bit of that beautiful, you know, hot red. Okay, so here's some hot red. Hot red. It's just regular red. But it's, it's going to look really, really zippy on here. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to make some, some red bushes. Some of those big, beautiful autumn red bushes that I'm seeing around town and in the forest. And you can see how that red just bounces off, and we're looking for contrast here, and in, uh, bounces off that green right there, and we're going to push that back into the, the bushes back in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing kind of over here a little bit, kind of balance it out, but I might drag it, I'll make it a little bit more random, so I'll, I'll drag it in over here. I'm lacking this a lot. The wonderful, wonderful contrast with that teal and the lime green against the red into the water down here like this, kind of little bits on top of that. And so um, that's working great. I just love it. And we'll put some of that into this water again. And I will come back in at some point and I'll, and I'll put in some more of that teal, uh, the teal back and forth into the water. There. So. There's our, our interesting little reds into there. Now, I might uh, allow that to dry a little bit, or I might not this time. I don't want to wait. So I'm going to go ahead and add some bright orange now to the top of some of these and give it a little bit more bounce with a little more light. So here I go. I'm going to put some of the orange, and I keep dipping in. It's also creating some texture, you guys. So I'm getting, you know, some actually 
as soon as it dries, I'll be able to feel it with my hand. It's going to be wonderful. I don't want too much texture down here, but I want to make sure that that orange gets into the water a little bit. Wow, loving that. That's really, really great. And maybe just a bit. This one's more into the dark side of the canvas, so I don't want to get too carried away. But you can see how that begins to pull forward because it's a really hot color. Red and orange brings your eye right forward and it's going to be really great. Now, up here, we've still got that kind of golden tamarack thing happening. And so now I'm going to rinse this brush off and we're going to come back in with some brighter colors that's going to knock your socks off. Okay. All right, so the next layer up on this particular tree, we've kind of got that middle tone raw sienna. And I'm going to, in my cup, I've got some of that cadmium yellow. I'm adding white to it in order for it to not be transparent or translucent. Yellows are translucent, and you can see through them. And if I end up hitting it onto that blue background, it's going to actually look a little bit on the green side. So I want to add a little bit of white to it. It brightens it up. And I don't want to add so much white that I lose the fact that it's yellow. And we're going to add that to it very, very carefully with my little, you know, ratty burnt brush here. And I'm going to try to figure out where some of these uh, branches are and try to hit the tops of them by picking them out. So I think I'll start with just the very top. And you can see, wow, you think that that's light and then all of a sudden you hit this uh, hit it with this particular color and it's wow it's just super bright super bright and you can take it up a little bit slower if you want you know you can just kind of work up a little bit to it but I really like it and so I'm kind of hitting it and brushing it down a little bit uh, I'm not uh, just randomly you know hammering it on like some of my kids do so uh, we don't want to just do it uh, just because it feels good no we want to be deliberate and careful in the way we apply our paint. It's not just Jackson Pollock going crazy across the canvas. No way. We're trying to make sure that things are, are working in a systematic way. Now, as I come around the tree, I, you know, I don't want it just split to where it's just white on one side and black on the other, or light on one side and dark on the other. I have to have something that ties it together in the middle. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to take some of that um, raw sienna and kind of carry it over into the center so I have a really light uh, color or light light value in on this side I have a middle value with a slightly lighter middle value and as we bring it around and uh, and then it'll be a little bit darker on that side so let's see if we can keep going with that a little bit and so light 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 on that side and I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. I'm going to drag it out a little bit bigger. I start a little bit smaller and then I extend out with the light uh, the tree until it, it fills out into this beautiful, beautiful tree. And so now we'll put back in a little bit of the raw sienna. Here we go. And I've got to extend this branch out just a bit longer because I can't have a lopsided tree. That would be silly. So here we go. And here's some more down here that comes down kind of crossing over in front of this green uh, that we just did just a little bit. And here it goes down into this beautiful area down in here. We're going to go back into some of the, the raw sienna again so it's not quite so bold right there. And pull that down, kind of cross that branch over a little bit. I don't want it looking like a garland on Christmas where it's just ram, ram, ram all the way around. That would be a little silly. Uh, let's go a little bit over here and a little over here. I'm liking that. Now we need to come down actually into the water again. Here we go. And I'm going to just wiggle that in. I'm noting that that's right there, so I'm coming straight down and making sure that we have a little bit of a reflection coming down here into the water at that level. And then how far out does it go? It goes out to right about there. So I'll put just a little bit into this part of the water and wiggle that back and forth a little bit. Maybe take some in a downward stroke like I was talking about. Downward strokes are the ones that give us that feeling of it being uh, water or reflections. And then we will weave some of that teal across the top or across the, the top of that water so that it makes sense when we, uh, when we go to finishing it up. All right, so down 
kind of wiggle wiggle and I know it looks like a mess right there that's okay we're gonna come back in and I want to make sure I have just enough as we go across there and then I will tie that in with some beautiful watermarks here shortly good all right that's looking good and now uh, now I want to actually lighten up a little bit on this side with a little bit of our raw sienna so we don't want it to be as bright as this one because that's the featured tree right here so I'm going to just take a little bit of the raw sienna on the side of this tree and we'll lighten it up just a bit carrying it around just a tiny bit I might leave a little bit of dark on the uh, on the tree just intermittently as we go around a little bit and then it comes out like this all right here we go make sure I don't get too much of that white in in there and uh, it's just beginning to really take on a wonderful glow there we go just a bit now it's looking like one of my yellow tamaracks I love it it's just great so the key is to try to figure out how to make it look like a tamarack but it's also needing to be in kind of in shadow a little bit away from the you know the queen tree a little bit so I'm giving it just a bit on this side now uh, let's actually let's take a little bit of that orange onto our brush with that color and see if we can tone it down yeah there now it's toned down a little bit but we can still add some light to it so a little bit of orange with our our raw sienna and I need to put a little bit up here just because the Sun is going to come through there just a tad good and let's get that get a little bit too much light on there a little too much white maybe just a branch kind of sticking out right there ah. sometimes I, I get carried away and I put a branch too far out and then I have to put another one back out this far and try to make it make sense a little bit that's really looking good let's broaden out the bottom part too right in here just a bit I like these big trees just enough of that purple landscape in the background sticking through that we know that there's some distance back there isn't that wonderful yeah it is I love it I have a little confession to make you guys now I have painted um, portraits in oil for California Institute of Technology for their Nobel laureates and I painted national champion dressage horse and its rider and I've done all kinds of beautiful still life and glass and copper and that sort of thing in oil but one thing I just have never really done much of and that is landscape and so I'm just after 30 years of painting I'm getting into landscape and so I'm sharing this with you as I'm learning along side of myself okay so that's where we're at right now isn't that funny I think it's kind of funny we can learn something new every day can't we yeah okay now we're gonna go down in here and we're gonna put some of this reflection we can't forget that we're gonna put some of that reflection down into the water I'm gonna put a little bit more orange in there so we're gonna put a little bit of that orange just to give it a little bit of a break up here and uh, we'll put put just a little bit like that and I can see this one kind of comes together like this and I'm not paying too much attention as to what the the actual branches are doing too much I mean I have to do a little bit of that and then we'll come back in I'm going to come down and make sure that we have a good little reflection uh, all the way down straight down here we go down to this part right here and then uh, now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to do those crazy beautiful water lines going across so let's get our little filbert brush and we're going to tie it all together with this beautiful velvety water surface let's do it okay I have my teal on my brush and I'm gonna come back in and do just a little bit of this wonderful zigzag I do a kind of the letter Z come back a little ways and then stretch it out I love that particular move it helps you to kind of understand what I'm doing it's straight across like that and I want to remember it's it's a horizontal surface it doesn't go 
down, it doesn't go at an angle, it doesn't make big S's, it's just across like this and then it curves in a soft little curve and then it comes around like that. Now don't get that, that's a little bit exaggerated but you get my idea. And so maybe I'll make this one just a little bit longer. Might sort of almost connect those water lines up together and then I'll put this one back over here a little bit. And they get smaller as they go back into space. So up here in the, in the front, I might even make something that goes a little bit on the wide side. I just don't want to make them even to where I have one every inch. That would just be silly. It would be like John Philip Sousa on the top of the water. It's going to be a little bit different as I go down. And so I'll, I'll make them kind of just do some different things. Now, if you've ever seen one of my water paintings where I kind of weave the water together in oil, uh, they're really interesting. I'm going to go back in here and put a few more back in here. And uh, very different, very stylistic. And here's one of them. I'll pop it on the screen for you so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, you kind of get an idea of, of a stylistic type thing where you can go, you know, have your, have your weaving of the water, as I call it. And it's kind of an interesting thing. Okay, now oh, I want to step back and take a look at what I'm doing here and see what it needs. Hold on. Okay, I step back a little ways and I think what I want to add in here is just a very, very dark value underneath here. Now this is just a dark, um, I've got a little bit of dark blue and purple and we'll just kind of bring it down into this area here and then it, I think it'll just kind of, I'll go over this water just a little bit uh, and I just want to make this a little bit darker as we hit almost almost like a, a bank down in here okay and then I'm gonna have to do the same thing over here so I like that um, it just feels like it needs something here and uh, if you were painting in a traditional uh, method with your oil paint maybe a dark brown or something like that would help and so it just kinda pulls that in and helps frame things just a little bit better I think now you could you can disagree with me all you want that'd be fine but uh, I'm just going to try that and then I'm going to pull some of that dark dark purple down into the water just a little bit like this. I think I like that. Yeah, I do. So I've just kind of put a little dark purple, a little bit of blue and some red into that and I'm just bringing it down into the water like this so that when I put my, my water line in there you'll be able to see it just a little bit better. So let's put another water line in again. And so I'm going to come in with that, that teal. Oh yeah, that's nice. There we go. And I'm going to kind of wiggle that back and forth like that. Okay, that's much better. I needed something to bounce that water off so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Here we go. That's a little lumpy for some reason. And then we'll pull that into back and forth. Now remember, your, your side to side stuff, you guys, has got to be horizontal. It really does. I can't emphasize that. These things go f down and the water lines go horizontal and then we're going to pull this one out because it's bugging me a little bit like that. Now I'm going to add just some white along the water edge. Okay, so I'm going to put that little white line that just kind of comes across here a little bit. What I don't want to see is a big large white line going all the way across the canvas. Don't be doing that. That would wreck your painting. And don't forget, if it is a little bit too wide or if you get too much, too much of the white thing going on, uh, you can just come up with teal underneath it and, and make it a little bit smaller. So let's see what happens. And I'm, I'm just riding this on top of some of these um, teal strokes just a little bit like that. Now I'll just zig it around a little, zigzag it around. And then I'll put in again some more teal so that I don't wreck it like this. Okay, a little bit of teal underneath. This one is a little bit of a delicate process. I'm just kind of learning a little bit more about it. And uh, you're going to see a little more of the light part right in the center, or not in the center, but wherever the light is. You're going to see a little more of that, the white strokes, just a touch. Got to be careful with those. Wow. Okay, now what am I missing? Oh. 
This tree over here needs just a little bit of help and I think we're gonna finish that up and it will be done in just a moment, okay. Okay, so one of the things that I noted today when I was looking out in the forest, uh, there are a lot of green trees that are around the tamarack trees. They're not just a big, huge, you know, mass of tamarack trees. So I'm gonna actually come in with a little bit uh, what I did was I put a little teal with a little bit of our raw sienna together. I'm going to see what happens if I just give this tree a little bit of a kind of a, a shaded teal kind of a um, green color. It pushes it back still, but it isn't, it doesn't look like a dead tree. And I don't want a dead tree. I want it to kind of look a little piney. And so it ties a little bit in with these little green bushes down here. I think I like that. It's not too sticky outy, you know, it just kind of has its own little uh, in the back, a uh, little bit of the back of the choir kind of thing. And uh, I like that a lot. And now I'm going to add just a tiny bit of yellow to it so that it has a little bit more of a statement, tiny bit of that wonderful lime green at the top as though it's picking up a little bit of that wonderful light that's coming through the forest without being the star of the show. That's really kind of important to me. So I have a little bit of that lime green coming down here. And then I might just put just a touch of that. I'm gonna come down and put just a touch of that in the water. And that'll give it a reason to have some lime green in that water. And I, I really want that color down here. So I'm putting that in. And so that gives me a um, justification to put a little bit of green in the water. Yeah. Okay, everybody, I think that's all I'm going to do on this particular painting for today. And I hope you learned something. Next time we meet, we'll be doing an art critique. And that means I'm going to show you some various paintings that have been donated to the studio for various purposes. And we're going to take a look at where things are good and where things have gone awry. And we're going to do a little what's wrong with this painting and how to correct it. And we'll keep going with our list on uh, on what's causing your paintings to look amateurish and how to fix it. Okay, so a special shout out today to Kenneth Brandt. Now Kenneth Brandt is an, a relatively new art teacher on YouTube and I wanted to say hi to him so go and check out his little uh, channel and uh, let me know if you did. Okay, and I will see you guys again next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>